Hello everyone and welcome. In this video, we're going to be talking about nine things you should do before engine tuning. Number one, perform a full diagnostic check. The first thing you really need to do when you take your car in to get it remapped is a full diagnostic check using an OBD scanner to read the error codes from the ECU. The ECU keeps track of all the problems in your car. If there's a sensor acting up or something is not right in the engine, it will generally trigger an error code in the log. Just reading these error codes can actually highlight potential problems and pitfalls, and it may even reveal issues that you were not aware of during everyday driving. So if you've got some error codes, make sure they're addressed and get them cleared. To know the location of each OBD2 code and their fixes, check our playlist on OBD2 codes. It is necessary because it highlights the weak spots of your car engine. If you've got a weak engine, it's going to break after you've had it remapped just because you've not addressed that potential weakness or flaw. Number two, check for boost leaks. At normal boost levels, you might not necessarily notice a leak unless you're looking out for it. Make sure that all the boost hoses are in good condition, clamped correctly, and there are no signs of leaks anywhere. The intercooler, especially the plastic pipes, can be prone to splitting or coming loose. A boost leak means you're losing boost pressure, and once you remap your car and push more boost into the engine, any flaws or defects in the intake system will become apparent. This will prevent you from making the power you want and achieving peak efficiency during the tune. Number three, do a full servicing of your car. Before you take your car in for tuning, have a full service done. This includes changing the oil, spark plugs, fuel filter, and all other items typically listed in your service schedule. Ensuring that the car is in top condition will allow your tuner to realize the maximum potential of your specific engine. Number four, check the oil pressure. It's also worth checking that the oil pressure is good. If the oil pressure is a little low, you may be fine on a standard engine. But when you start running it with a remap or you've tuned it and you're making more power, everything is running hotter, harder, and faster. If you've got an oil supply issue, it will cause other problems. Make sure that the oil is flowing correctly around the engine and there's no sludge built up in there or other problems that will become evident after you've had it remapped. Number five, perform a compression test. This test checks the compression in each of the cylinders and you're looking for them all to be fairly equal and within the manufacturer's specifications. If one cylinder is starting to leak, it could be a piston ring, a valve seat problem, or a valve problem itself. Addressing these issues is crucial, because if the engine is not completely equal for all the cylinders, it's going to experience problems after you've had it remapped or made modifications to increase power. Number six, test for emissions. It's also worth getting an emissions check done to make sure that the catalyst or the DPF filter, if your car has one, are working within normal parameters. This gives you a benchmark to ensure that after it's been tuned, you're still going to meet those emissions regulations in your specific local area. If the car is already starting to struggle to meet emissions, then it's unlikely to meet those regulations after you've had it remapped because you're burning more fuel. If the engine's not been doing it efficiently without the tuning, it's going to struggle even more after you've increased the power. Number seven, use premium quality fuel. Make sure your tank is filled with premium quality fuel. Go for a higher octane or higher cetane fuel and stick with that fuel after it's been mapped. That's the best way of ensuring you get the maximum power from your remap. If you want to keep your costs down and use lower grade fuel, then by all means take it to the mapper with that lower grade of fuel in it, but let them know. Bear in mind that the engine will not be working as efficiently or optimally as possible. If fuel economy is a concern, you can actually ask the mapper to take that into account. So instead of going for maximum power, it can be balanced with maximum fuel economy or somewhere in between. Number eight, make a list of all the mods and upgrades that you've had done. When you're tuning a car and it's on the dyno, it's really handy to know if there are non-standard parts in there, particularly fuel injectors, fuel pumps, air filters, induction kits, exhausts, or catalyst removal. Anything that makes a significant change to the way the engine works needs to be considered. A good mapper should spot most of it, 
but if you've generated a list, it will really cut down the time they spend identifying these parts. This allows more time to optimize your map and ensure your car is running at its very best. Number 9. Upgrade the clutch. A common weak spot after you've had a remap done is the clutch. Putting extra power through it may well cause that clutch to start slipping, degrading, or even failing. Check your clutch by doing a hill start in a low gear and hitting the throttle. If the engine revs pick up smoothly and the car starts to speed up without slipping, your clutch is in good condition. If it slips, consider upgrading to a heavier duty, better quality clutch, especially if you're pushing for a significant power increase. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, share it with fellow automotive enthusiasts, and subscribe to our channel for more in-depth automotive diagnostics and repair guides. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified of our upcoming video.